the objective of the Future of Manufacturing initiative is to really explore how the global manufacturing ecosystem is evolving. You will see an accelerated process of uh, manufacturing, especially high technology manufacturing, moving towards Asia. We see a lot of uh, instability and we see currency both fluctuating, but more importantly, we see exposure to currency creating some real issues for global multinationals. There is a rigorous debate in the U.S. about does manufacturing actually matter? Well, the manufacturing sector in every country is critical because it delivers an R&D base that actually provides skills for a whole range of other industry sectors. Development is about the accumulation of a very large set of capabilities that go into making a very large set of possible products. Countries that have many of these capabilities are able to make many things. There are certain competencies associated with the manufacturing of certain advanced products that are in fact very important. And if the United States or any other nation loses those competencies, it can affect the overall competitiveness of the nation. There is a key challenge for businessmen to engage their corporation in strengthening their capacity to innovate. There's some innovation that happens that allows us to substitute the scarce resources that are causing a problem for something new and different. What it's going to lead to is an explosion in materials science. Free trade makes an economy better, makes it stronger, educates its people. It also allows goods to transfer around the world. With the terrible earthquake in Japan, people became far more aware of the effects of disruptions on the global supply chain. Some of the manufacturing jobs are going to move from Europe and the United States. These flows always follow the path of least resistance in terms of financial ecosystem, regulatory ecosystem, education, infrastructure, whatever that might be. In order to prevent the companies uh, evacuating uh, to overseas countries from Japan, is to give incentive to industry uh, again. The biggest challenge now is to get the industry policy settings right. We need governments to have the political will to work with the private sector and organise labour. The planning at a government level is very, very important. And that's what China does well. There are certain places that make certain things much better than other places. Enterprises don't need to be located in one place. They can be deconstructed and have capabilities located in various parts of the world. If you take a look at the way an Airbus airplane is made, there's over 27 different countries that take part in that manufacture. We're seeing labor rate arbitrage fading. We're seeing greater exposure to currency volatility. These factors may combine to actually re-aggregate some value chains. It's hard to compete with the scalability that China brings. It's hard to compete with the scalability that Brazil has. It's hard to compete with the scalability that India has. So there are certain common denominators uh, in terms of mass production that drive why larger countries uh, in the technology sector will probably have a larger share of that industry for a while. I think the first thing governments have to look for is what are they going to be good at? What type of education do they have for their people? What type of job skills do they have? What type of natural resources do they have? what type of government regulation and who do they want their products to go to in the world. Low-cost manufacturing, where the driver is to get the lowest possible labour costs, is short-sighted, it's not sustainable, doesn't drive quality or certainty of supply. So those countries and those companies that can figure out a way to either acquire, uh, develop and retain the most talented workforces appears that they're going to be the winners. How do we get this whole skilling process in place? The potential is there. We got a large number of uh, young Indians graduating out of uh, colleges, universities, but there's a big gap between the knowledge that they have and the knowledge that's required. The government is very keen in strengthening the capacity of, uh, of workers through an expansion of vocational training. India is now building its next big surge into manufacturing. We are like a glass which is three quarters empty and we have to fill it with the new manufacturing. Labour and business working together can drive the enabling legislation, the industry policy to ensure advanced manufacturing and any country that's not driving advanced manufacturing is going to miss the boat.
we're structuring a dialogue series with a framework that helps to parse through the issues and bring business leaders and government leaders together to achieve a better collective understanding.